Greetings. Um, the next is the Bard. Um, and this class, I'll have to admit, I've never been interested in Bards except for the original first edition Bard prestige class. All subsequent editions, second, third, and Pathfinder, I've just not had any interest in. So, a lot of the Bard song abilities just were not that interesting to me, and I apologize. Uh, but they also have the archetypes. For example, the uh, the archivist, you know, someone that does a lot of academics and tailoring your character class to that concept. Um, the detective. Now, this is kind of an interesting. I like that. That that is very much going after the the street beat cop concept. You know, you're out to find uh, the clues. Obviously tailored to. Um, in my opinion, at least, to an urban campaign. I guess you, you could do it not urban, but I police investigations to me always been focused on that urban city kind of theme. Um, and the Savage Scald, if you want to have kind of a the Celtic Norse kind of a theme of uh, the bar, of, of the barbarian or warrior bard that goes out in the world, spreads fame and fortune for both himself and for the people that he works for. Um, next we have the cleric, and this introduces the idea of subdomains. So uh, it takes a domain, and then it gives you two options of how you could focus that domain in a slightly different way. Uh, for example, uh, favorite uh, focus domains, construct, and you could then have, uh, which is a sub uh, uh, artificer, artifice. So it's focused about being better at building constructs and things like that. Now, each of the current existing domains has two subdomains with uh, replacement powers, uh, domain powers, um, and uh, the new spells. So it gives your character a whole lot more options if you felt constrained by the other domains as they had previously been presented. This is going to live, you get, give you the option of a lot more flavor and a lot more versatility. Um, I quite frankly thought the old domain choices were good, but more is better. Um, the Druid. And a lot of these are environmental focused archetypes. So. Um, Arctic Druids, 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 <laughs> um, Desert Druids, uh, the jungles, things like that. So they're being focused to a specific campaign style, uh, which is good if your campaign has one of these. Um, they also have an option here um, for the Animal Shamans, which is playing an animal theme, like a Bear Shaman or an Eagle Shaman, and abilities that are that scale from first up. Um, based off of that animal, which I think is a nice option as well, and uh, fits into certain kinds of uh, campaigns. For example, I've always really considered the the, the, the Norse to have really be have that kind of totemic uh, concept, and I kind of like the options available there. Um, next, we have the fighter, and again, our, our archetype focuses that um, give you builds essentially for example archer polearm master two weapon warrior um, and a number of different types of uh, combat styles and things like that which give a fighter a whole lot more options available to them and I like the way they handled this because I, I gotta tell you I can't think of many people who play a purely generic fighter they're playing a fighter that's a two-handed fighter, or they're playing a fighter that's an archer, or they're playing a sword and board fighter, you know what I mean? So this helps you create that character right out of the box without having to kind of build it yourself. This gives you a lot of stuff that will help you achieve your goal um, more effectively. Um, the Paladin, uh, more again similar to the to fighter, more um, archetypes, for example, the Hospitaliter, um, the Shining Knight, classic, and they give you an alternate class here, a full-blown class in this chapter, the Anti-Paladin, which made me smile. Um, 
made me think back to the old days uh, when anti-paladins were first introduced. Was it in a Dragon magazine, maybe? I can't remember. Um, but I can remember the big controversy when they hit the world. But that was kind of nice if you wanted the anti-paladin concept to add it to your campaign. Now you've got a full-blown Pathfinder version thereof. Um, the Ranger, new combat styles. Um, for example, mounted. This is focusing as uh, how to be a better mounted uh, ranger, which again was great if you're playing a small ranger and you want to riding a medium. You can then get that character into into places that you can't bring a horse into. I'm really liking the idea of mounted small characters lately. I have no idea why. I just like the fact that there's it's so many options available to you. And again, more archetypes here. Uh, the guide, uh, the horse lord, if you're really into the outdoor environment, the cavalier class doesn't do it for you, you like the abilities of the ranger, but you want that ranger focused on a steed, it doesn't have to be a horse, but you get the idea. Um, and then they also have an urban ranger here, and I'm reading this, and all I can think of is the spirit. You know the Eisner character, in that excretable film that was based on him? Um, really uh, an excellent idea of playing someone that's part and parcel of the city, obviously, urban based. Uh, next we have rogues, all kinds of new rogue talents. Um, not quite as many as new barbarian abilities, but still a plethora of options for your character. And again, more ar archetypes. Uh, the acrobat, the cut purse, the swashbuckler, which is nice because I, well, the swashbuckler class that was introduced in um, 3.5 was viable. To me, that is a variation of an existing class. It not necessarily needs to be a class in its own right. And so making this an option in Rogue, which is a very viable uh, class to have as a swashbuckler. Um, so again, lots of roguey options in here. Uh, I was quite pleased with the selection. Um, next we have the uh, Sorcerer, bunch of new bloodlines, all kinds of new blood, and one of them, the first one was Aquatic, and it is a Lovecraftian Cthulhu Mythos deep one. I was smiling ear to ear when I'm reading this bloodline. You turn into a deep one, man, that is just so cool. Um, another one is Serpentine, lots of snaky themes things, if you're a Harry Potter fan and you're a Slytherin. Here's your Sorcerer Bloodline. Um, Verdant, which is all about plant-based things, which is very cool. You literally become rooted to the world itself. And, I, and I, I like the way they handled this. So again, I love the Bloodline abilities that the Pathfinder game uh, gave to the Sorcerers, and here's a whole bunch more for you. And like I said, more is often better. Uh, and the last is a Wizard, and they're presenting you with uh, two options, the main options. One is the elemental schools. So you're having an elemental uh, wizard based off the four earth, air, water, fire. Um, a variation on the uh, specialist, essentially. Uh, and, I, and I like that idea. Uh, I think it would have been also interesting if they had introduced a wood or metal, um, if you want to do a slightly Asian kind of theme. But th with th what they give you here, um, and what they, and information that already exists on specialists, I think any GM who wanted to could create those two uh, elemental variations if you wanted to. And the other is um, focused arcane schools, like the subdomains for the cleric, here's the same thing. Taking existing um, specialist schools and focusing them a little differently to give variations within each of the arcane specializations. Um, the next section is um, feats, and as you can imagine, there's lots and lots of feats in here. Uh, I'm not going to cover all of them, just going to hit a couple of highlights. Um, breadth of experience, available to dwarves, elves, and gnomes. You get a plus two uh, to knowledge uh, and professional checks if you're 100 years or older, which is uh, useful because these are long-lived races, so if you're playing one who's a little older, you can still be in primary life, excuse <coughs> me, and yet this says that, it says that you're older. You've gained some experience. You know, us, us older folks, we actually learn things as we get there, at least in theory. Um, deep Sight, adding a plus 60 to your dark vision. 
very handy if you have a race that is uh, has dark vision and you want to make it, it, it significantly better. Um, Iron Hide. You need a con of 13, you need to be either a dwarf or a half orc, and you get a plus one to natural armor class. You are just tougher. I think that's very iconic for a dwarf in particular, because I've always had kind of a, I, the idea that dwarves are, of all the races, a little more elemental. Um, and a summoner call, which is a bonus to your um, Adelon. There's a number of feats in here built into this book, which reinforce some of the options that are available to you in the new classes. Not a real shocker there. Um, there's some new meta magic feats, for example, bouncing, which is a spell that literally hits a target and then bounces to another target, which I thought was kind of cool. And then reach, which is in increases the spell range on a uh, on a spell. Um, and of course, these are going to bump up your uh, effective caster, uh, the, the the cost of the of the spell slot that the, the spell has. Um, then they have a bunch of teamwork feats. The teamwork feats. For example, ducking cover, take allies reference save. So if your ally has a better reference save than you. Um, and um, outflank, which is a plus four to hit when flanking. Um, you have to have a plus four bab to be able to take this. Now these teamwork feats only function if multiple people in your group have them. So if you want to take advantage of the outflank, you have to have at least one other person in your group who's got outflank as well. And then you have to meet the requisites um, of the of the ability in that combat round, I have a problem with teamwork feats in this regard because I think that feats are just so precious that it's going to be difficult to get two people in a group, particularly in a four-person group where you're playing an arcane, a divine, a skill person, and a combat person, to get two people that are going to want to spend their feats on the same thing. You know what I mean? Mm, not loving them so much, but that's just me. Um, next we have equipment, um, which is uh, mundane things with some, um, I think there's some alchemical stuff in here as well. Uh, weapons and armor, of course. I really like the wood armor. I thought that was quite nice. I don't know why it didn't exist in the game already. Gives a nice nature-based armor available to your rangers and druids out there. I've used uh, wooden armor for a long time, but this puts it into an official book, which is nice. Um, and they give a bunch of sex selections of weapons. Now, I can't quite fathom why they put the boomerang into the category of exotic. Now, you can throw a club already. It has a crappy range, I freely admit. So, this is a club that has a better range. Perfect sense. It's an aerodynamic stick, which is what a boomerang is. They don't return, folks. Boomerangs that return are toys. Real boomerangs were used for hunting and warfare, and they were aerodynamic. And in fact, um, some of the hunting ones were designed to fly and then hook up. So you would throw them at a flock of birds that were on the ground, they would be spooked, fly into the air, and then this thing would just cut through this flock of birds, hitting a couple of them, breaking their wings. Lunch on. Um, but they made it exotic. It's a stick that has better range. There is no reason that a stick with better range is exotic. It should be martial. It's not that much more complex. If you know how to use a club, which is simple, and you know how to throw a club, which is simple, having a better club, to me, means a little more expertise, which is easily defined by the, the category of martial. Don't know why people are punishing people, they're punishing players and characters for having a slightly better weapon. Um, and one of the pieces of equipment in here, the mundane pieces of equipment that made me smile was dog sleds. I thought that was cool. Uh, never really thought about it. It's nice that they're in the game now. Um, the next section we have here is all about PRCs, and I'm going to put that into the next video. Thank you.